crispy crickets this year, aren't we? Don't we? Burning up everywhere. Everyone's talking about directed energy weapons. I, I don't know, folks. There's lots of uh, interesting proofs, apparently, optically. But being a photographer, I recognize there's lots of anomalies in lenses. But uh, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Uh, we have a, a forest fire policy nationwide that's uh, no good. It's actually good because uh, it's the bottom line. But the problem is it's the bottom line is viewed through eco-terrorists, those that would rather have sustainable development. And so that's what we do here during the week. We try to work on those things that have been left out uh, over these years, and no one paid attention. Nobody has a clue how this system works and how it's changed. And so we just try to bring this, try to not educate ourselves to what that is and try to bring back some, no, they're not the new normal, but the normal of, that actually works. The new normal is that future, what they call the postmodern, whatever that is. Again, all these terms. But, uh, fires that you see are really based in a problem of a policy. That's also based in a problem of a, of a uh, failed administration of lawful forest management. And so we have, uh, if you look around, you're having lots of crickets burning up, and uh, a couple at least. And it's a shame because if we could get, a, if I could get you all to just start seeing how this thing actually works, we could have a literally an army of people combating these uh, transparent soldiers de- destroying our lives. And all the complaints that we have would be relatively quickly, I would say, relatively quickly rectified. Because I go on that, I have to say relatively quickly because I don't know uh, when we get lots of people doing what they were supposed to be doing all this time. In other words, it was upon the populace in order to keep keep the life they wanted because it was going to be always an invasion. People tend to want to ignore this part. The fallen nature of man is such that he'll attack himself, those of his own so-called. Cain killed Abel should have been a big one, but let's not get over that way. We'll just stay back here where we allow policies to come upon us that we, we shouldn't we shouldn't uh, agree to. And so we see we see this happening. Uh, there's a reckoning happening slowly, but it's it's too slow in my mind. It's, I may I may not see the end of the work that we do. And it would come a lot quicker if a lot of you understood really more what I say and uh, really rolled up your sleeves and engaged where I, where I ask you to engage. And I don't make that decision of where you would go because that's all up to you. So before we get too far, this is BTWRLM277. I'm trying to keep these <laughs> these numbers right in my head. I believe that's 277. And for those of you that are looking for where this is after in the whatever uh, cast we find, YouTube, Minds, uh, Spreaker, and Spreaker, thank you, those listeners right there. Thank you very much for what you do over there. I don't get too much of the chats. It's too much to try and keep up with and keep a coherent thought on what I do. Uh, but uh, for those of you that don't have a place, rlmradio.xyz is a place you can find the broadcast during the, the live or uh, the stream from reallibertymedia.com. And uh, because of a, a really peculiar glitch in the matrix, we're also live on UCY TV. So that's that was cool. I found out this morning from Jules, and Jules, thank you for keeping that hooked up and running. So, those of you that uh, want to hear us uh, during the Sunday, and you want you don't want to go to Real Liberty Media, which I don't know why. It's a nice uh, nice place to come and hear lots of stuff and actually jump in the chat. And you can play a game right before you know the game right before the um, this broadcast if you want. With Grimner doing his blues, they also play a, a trivia game. I call it the hamster wheel. It's like all this stuff running through so quickly, I can't keep up and do all my work here to, to keep up with this, but uh, periodically looking and, and uh, a lot of stuff going on. But uh, So there's lots of activity going on at Real Liberty Media. We just got to get people together. I'd like to see a whole lot more focusing on getting, maybe not during the broadcast or during the bro- shows, but you know, after we pull off, start looking at ways to fight fight the fire that's that's around us, not just the fire we see, but the one that was caused by the people done. Now, no, no, get back a little quickly there. We're not going to stop fires. I mean, this is not what that's about. But we're going to be able to respond better to them. And we'll have a condition, as I explained to you a long time ago, and this is over two years ago now, how long this has been working. We're barely getting help. We're barely getting things to come out now of the government and acknowledgments. After two years, and there's only a couple of us working on this, and it's still coming up. So I notice if we get a whole bunch of people working, it'll. I think it goes a lot quicker. But the, uh, the, pol- the policies that were uh, coming down, were to try and use forest uh, fire as a managing tool, and they let it get out of hand. Uh, that can't happen. And so we're we're I'm working with other people to understand the condition and make make the bar higher. 
And you do that locally. All you all that are in fire areas, you do that locally. Even if you're not in a fire area, you do that locally. Your your local governments, when you look at the 1995 forest policy, it has a provision inside. It acknowledges that there's a superior power in the local county areas. And you just have to lay that out. And you have to set the higher bar. And when you don't, you get the kind of stuff that's going on in the country right now. We're losing crickets, even. Crickets are burning. So, anyway, go, getting over to thank you, whoever it was, who donated to the last moment for um, uh, freedomsnetwork.com. We're going to go another 30 days there, I suppose. Uh, I'd ask you, if you could, donate before it gets to the last second. And then use that as a, a censorship-free tool to do what I'm asking you to do. Get Find something you want to make right, and we'll work together uh, as we as you tell me uh, or as I hear or as I hear people having maybe a difficulty or want to understand something I can I can contribute th- certain things and in the direction of a, of a wrong you see that you need to make right because it just needs to be done and on, on that point I get quite a few emails asking me well how do you sustain yourself when you're fighting these this situation how do you how do you break away and still go well that's a big question and I had a couple more people come this way it's, it's funny that people come in batches I only offer, and I, uh, some of this is I'm going to respond to this, and I think it's really important to understand. I'm not able to offer everybody their answer. I'm only offering what I can see is a narrow path that you can then start measuring yourself against to try and get you back and understand the foundation to get you back to how we should have been doing what we were entitled to by not entitlement, but uh, in the way this works in this United States of America, literally the only place in the, in the that I can understand in the history of man that did what it did regarding its land laws and its uses. And that's, to me, the key. And so my perspective is through that land disposal law. It doesn't mean it's limited to being able to do that, but I have no thing I do outside of that. My only example right now is to get everyone to see the better and clearer path to how we're supposed to think again and the things we need to do. But we're encumbered by a lot of things that we didn't know about getting here. And so I'm asked, well, how do you how do you keep going? Well, you, you do what you have to do, and you'll have these millstones around your neck that you, we didn't understand, we really didn't need to take on, but we don't have a, necessarily the knowledge to, to kick them back off. And yet it can be done. And so I offer, again, as I explained, you're not going to get what I say in 10 minutes here, 5 minutes, whatever thing you, you decide you're not listening no more, I don't know, or even go a couple hours. You're not going to get what I'm trying to say to you by a detached uh, listen and then leave. You really have to listen for a while, and then you have to put together for you what I'm saying in those areas. And that's why I touch a general, a general notices the news type of approach, because I don't know which, what might inspire any one of you, but it'll all be focused down to what you have to do. And I don't even know about you or your potential so-called millstones, if I call them millstones, or the things that we put our, we applied to ourselves that we find now were wrongly applied to us, and we didn't. We didn't have the better, a better idea, a better thought, and a better foundation on how to avoid them or defend ourselves. And so on the no, on the idea of, of how do you provide for yourself, well, I've offered and trying to focus us back into, well, how do we get to the foundation and the, and the narrow path to understand it so it's not so confusing? Because I see so much confusion and, and regurgitated confusion, even worse than that. As I point to the, to the mining law as a land disposal law, homesteading did the same thing, but for the surfacing, other grants, like the highways, did the same thing. And they set up also a relationship that people, I think, are most 99.999% fine, don't understand. And I try to come here every week and do some kind of discussion about that. And I suggest this mining law acceptance in a mining claim, not because it may be the only thing, but because it's a easy way to understand land disposal laws and your rights can issue from that and it's defensible from that. So for a miner, the, a mining claim gives him a livelihood granted to him. It's not in commerce. It's not a trade occupation or profession. It's not anything that's regulable. It has a pertinent right in the grant that has to be honored by both federal and state governments. And uh, as I lay that out to anybody, it may not be something that you're interested in. You may not even know the first thing about it. And, and there's a, a mind about mining. There, there's a There's a people in the world that do that there's uh, those of us that are miners are miners that's how we partly get we did we've done this through history and so it's a very foundational thing to be looking at but the united states is for the land disposal and the livelihood is 
is, is granted as well as ingress and egress, as well as water, as well as the exclusive possession against all else. And so that's a very fine example to look at to show where we all should be. Now, I don't know all the places we can go in order to have that happen, but once we go outside of this example, then we have to look at particulars. And the particulars are really based in what you're interested in, and then looking at the world as it's been cre cre uh, created around us so that we can then take the best path through there and we aren't putting on more millstones, or we're taking off the ones we don't want, actually. And there's very difficult ones uh, to, to throw off at this point, so it's not an immediate thing. So I want you all to understand this is a... It's a learning process, but it's also a journey. As I say, journey with purpose. You find that purpose and start working on it, but work in it with the new awareness that we got duped. And we may have a bunch of stuff on us that we don't want, but we get, have we now have the awareness to start to shed it. And, and that's a case-by-case -case effort, no different than disposal of land law. Every land right is a case-by-case, land-by-land, property-by-property discussion of relative rights or absolute rights, exclusive. And, and so we, um, that's why I've been trying to funnel everybody through this logic set to see this is the logic you use. And then from there, the rationale comes. And then you come up with how do I situate myself? And I start to avoid a lot of this stuff. So let me get to that point. I suggest you become a minor. You get a claim. You get all these pertinent rights. Now they're being violated. So it's not clean. It's not a clean slate either, but at least you have a defensible place that no one can trespass. See, if they do, you got them in a the criminal set real immediately. And this is what helps a lot of the miners that I work with or that know us in Jefferson Mining District. Uh, they don't have the problems with the government officials much. And I say much because there's always the guy, the idiot, wants to, wants, to do, wants to think he's got more power than he actually has. But if you're not in one of those, it takes a different, you have to start looking more specific to your facts. If your skill set isn't a miner, what, I don't know what to speak to. I have to hear what you're saying. And let me get back over to contractors. And I'm not going to say this is, this is a... Can't just say this is your, there's no silver bullet. So just in generality, I looked years ago for a contractor who was a building contractor. And everyone says you have to have a permit to build, be a building contractor. Well, if you look at the time, there was a clear distinction between someone who had to get a, a, a contractor's license and someone who didn't. And, and to tell you the, the most simple thing to understand was you didn't take, if you took on an employee, then the state got involved. If you didn't take on an employee, the state couldn't get involved if you positioned yourself, framed your condition just right. You had to know that, though. And we di I did that for quite a few people. Well, they've changed the rule. It didn't change the standard of the principle. They changed. They, obs they obscured this point after I had quite a few people doing that, after they got challenged by the state. This is years ago now. And I and they pointed out these things, no different than I do for miners this 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 way, but they can't change what I'm talking about in mining, so it's a lot clearer. They came to impose upon people that were contractors in claiming that they need a license and, and all the bonds and all that stuff. But in fact, you don't have to if you understand what the statute of limitations, the, the, the governmental limitations are. And that's why you, if you don't know that, it takes a time to learn those. And then it takes the time of the test. And so I can't give anybody a discussion on what they can do right off the bat. There's nothing I know. Even miners will have to defend their property. And I should tell you something. You're, there's always going to be an invasion. Someone is going to believe that they have an authority to interfere with you. I don't know why that is, but that's the fact. Right? There's going to be someone out there. Typically, the governmental people are the toughest to deal with because they think they have the biggest power, and the system will protect that. They're, they will try to hurt you with it. And I have it. I come here every week to try and show you and explain to stuff how we can do this without jeopardy to us in most cases. That's not absolute either. Nothing is absolute. I can't really offer a whole lot unless I hear more more things from whoever is offering me. As I said, I deal in specificity. I can touch the I can touch comprehensively, but when we need to go after answers for any one in particular, the one's facts and condition is the deciding factor and that's not not anything i can change and that's not anything that anybody can change immediately but can change over time and so it's not such a direct answer and i don't want to discourage anybody with uh, some of the things i say i try to keep it nice and clear it sounds a little abstract because people don't understand the concepts i take for granted some of the concepts and i start realizing that as i'm communicating uh, but over the year over the years i've been able hopefully uh, been able to explain Everybody has to make their decisions. They have to make those decisions. And then from there, I might have a suggestion. And a lot of times I do. 
It depends on how you want to go about it and what you're willing to, willing to do, what you can do, what you can't do. That's a decision you have to make, too. And so uh, I thank you for any, all the emails that come to ask. I want, I don't talk, I, it's hard to say on all this stuff. I don't do the email typing so well. Uh, I wish I could communicate more verbally specific to certain points, but I can't. And so I kind of have to throw out a generic letter as well in response, but it's specific enough. So I give you a, a mining law, a dis land disposal right, and when you start burrowing in on those and start understanding the foundation, you can take those principles and attach, start attaching them to other things, because that's all I would do in any other capacity that you might bring to say, what well, this is what I want to do. The other thing you may have to do is, you, for the most part, because we're in a bad way, we've allowed the oppression on us, and we didn't answer it early on. It's gained a, a root, a, a rooting now. It's very difficult in, in some areas, almost almost impossible. You may have to readjust what you think you want to do. Again, find the, the path of least resistance and still make the objective that you're after. So I, I can't say what anyone would do to help to get you along. Unconditioned, I can give you one example, I and mean, I can attach the principles for that to other things to do and what to look for. And they're out there. It's just a matter of being focused. I can't be focused on everything. So I'm not I'm not the the oracle that way to say, okay, this is what you're going to do in every instance. I would tell you, here's a set of conditions you're looking for. Here's the limitations you're looking for. They're there, but you have to look them for you and your situation. This is what you're doing. I have offered that land law, doing the land and coming from there will give you your best understanding. And then it's a matter of whether or not and how you're going to address address that. And there's things that are not being given to us uh, at this point that they aren't supposed to be interfering with. And I give you the example, and this comes into the mining law as well, because what underlines the mining claim is a patent. And you have as you, a valid mining claim, you have as patent rights. So when I tell you that there's a state, at least one state, that shows you that the judiciary of a state cannot affect that. In other words, there's no state authority to come in and affect that in any way. Now, you can't be charged with a crime. You can't be charged with a regulation violation. You can't be subject to their agencies. You can't be subject to the judiciary either. You can't. Uh, the legislature is off limits. In fact, the law that said that came from the legislature. Legislature not only is it express statement, but it's the implied, implied, and actual fulfillment of their obligation to say so. When you see that an underlying patent to land it can't be messed with. You should be focusing on that. Why? Because it's showing you that there's an off-limits to the so-called sovereign government, the all-powerful gov government. And what I hear people talking about, all these uh, ideas about anarchy and, and libertine, liberty, and all that, it's all built in there. And it's you don't have it because you abandoned it or didn't know it was there. And that's probably the bigger truth. And so we find, again, we're back to the millstones we've allowed on ourselves. And how do we, or the hole we dug for ourselves, well, how do we get out? Well, we have to start... We have to plan to dig out, and we have to finally do that. And that's not necessarily it's something I can do at a distance. I can give you an example. I can show you, the, uh, like I said, I can lead you to the path, and then it's up for you to take it for yourself. And I'm here. I've been here for, what, a decade now? Are you on air? I've been here for a decade, available to respond to people uh, that have, have a, a question. And so I don't know what else more to do. And the only thing that keeps me uh, sane at one level is that I know I have a handful of people, notwithstanding any of you all that will deny what I'm saying or object to what I'm saying or outright reject what I'm saying. I got a handful of guys that are I'm working with that we we take all these principles and we, we do pretty good. We do pretty good. In fact, we just got a, the for us, the Secretary of, of uh, Interior just let uh, Minner withdraw go that was wanting to be put in by the ex, by the environmental terrorists. They wanted to steal your minerals, our ability to get them, and our ability to get them for you, the society. And Zinke let that withdrawal expire. Well, guess what? We had a big comment, a couple comments in on that one. And I've told you again, over and over, we don't have any direct proof, and no one's talking to us. But wherever we lay in into a spot and we put down the law, we stand there to tell them we're a witness to this violation if they go beyond it. Nothing yet has passed beyond, past that point in the administrative side of this. And we shouldn't have to do it. And there's a silver bullet problem. We shouldn't have to do it, but we are having to do it is a problem. It means that we do have to go do something. We're not free 
like we ought to be. This is just the condition that we're under, that we've allowed, all of us have allowed upon us. However we've allowed it, we've allowed it. And so I hope uh, if you're listening, the, the, the few the last few weeks I've had a, quite a few people asking about this condition, so I figure I'd go ahead and quickly talk about it. I can't answer for you what you can do. I'm not, maybe not even the one to go after it. What I'm saying is that there's a path that we can do to relieve all of our, uh, uh, the things that we've tied up to and thought we had to do and, infor- and imposed, enforced under penalty of, as I say to you, these are felonies. These are extortions and coercions and conversions of your rights, property, uh, and interests and all that stuff that you know we're supposed to be there, but you're not enjoying. It's going to take a way to get, take up time to get back. And the part of the way you do that is what I've been telling you is you identify how the authorita is imposing on those things without a warrant. And now you've got them in a felony. And that's the first way you start to back, back them off, at least from my perspective today. That certainly wasn't my perspective or even under awareness back, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I was like the rest of you. I was literally looking for where America went, thinking it was a, it was promised to us and it was there. I just missed it. I just missed the turn somewhere. In fact, it probably was never given to us unless you had the insight in order to hold it for yourself. Again, we're back to each one of us. And that's how they diminished us. They diminished us by attacking each one of us. And they did it as a, attacking a whole. A very in, interesting attack. And so we're back to each one of us has to make these decisions. I've put that part on you, but I'm here to help uh, identify and contribute what I can to quicken, if you will, your advancement through your own knowledge of what's happened to you, because everyone's got different things on them, and have different regard requirements, and how to balance this thing that we are under but still get along in the world. As I've said before, and I, re- I write back to people, and I've said it again, I am not afraid of, if I had a license today, to have a driver's license, if that's what we're talking about, I wouldn't be afraid today to have one. In fact, I think that would be somewhat of a protection. It's not that I would have it long, but it, I, it wouldn't bother me if I had one. I now know how to go about showing it's a crime against me once I've done a couple of things to show that it was a mistake. And I've told you about that rescission stuff. That's pretty simple. That's right in the UCC, for those of you that understand a little bit about that on rescission of signatures. Not that it's a, a few sentences to do that. And then when they persist, and then you find the underlying grant, you just can't you just can't do that one step. You've got to go back and find why you have a right, the vested right you have in you, that they're going to recognize, they have to recognize, like a, like you see the patent right. See, a, a highway grant has the same power that the judiciary is not supposed to interfere as a patent. It's the same thing. So when you go there and say, you get out, you know, as I've explained, you don't attack this thing. You, oh, I got to go to work every day. How do I do that on the roads? Well, you got to fix that, but you don't do it as a right to drive. You bring it as a pertinent, your right to use the land that you have to ingress and egress. It's a grant to you to do that. There's no authority in the government to attack it. And when they do, it's a crime. Nobody knows this stuff except for some of the people that listen to me and, and behind the woodshed and pay attention. They know they've heard this, but nobody, you're looking, listen to a very small group of people that understand this condition. To the point that like I've, I've, I've talked with uh, like Clint Richardson, he told me, you know, he was on all over me when I talked about the patent. He was just all over me. He says, well, are you one of those guys that invents, that writes out your own patents? I go, no, 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 no. You're, you're missing the whole point. You're, he, you know, he, he wasn't with that either. But anyway, so I was able to explain, those patents are already there. And they're official. Why would I want to abandon that? That's, that's like, that's your license, if I can say it that way. That's your permission already given to you by the government. And it had no strings attached. Well, other than that you're responsible in the use of the property called the highway. It has nothing to do with rights. It has nothing to do with administration or regulation. It has to do with the grant of the use of that that space on the land. And you have to know how to go back through and make the record for that because that's they're not going to hand that to you. They want to hurt you with it. Again, no silver bullets, but it doesn't mean you don't have the what you don't have the it doesn't mean you don't have the silver bullets. Maybe you will. You put it together just right. Now as I'm starting to see when I put together these equity actions and I lay out the facts of the land right grants and then the appurtenant rights and the fact that they can't touch it and that they are as a crime I get crickets on the governmental side. That's what you want. You want crickets on the governmental side, not our side. 
Because in equity and a default, you got a binding judgment in default. It lasts a few days. It takes a few days. Now, does that mean that you win? Well, you won, but is it going to be acknowledged? That's the trick. Because what's happened is you're now recognizing you'll finally fully, fig, fully figure out you're living in that occupied territory, and they don't intend to give you all the stuff that they're supposed to honor. And that means those people are criminals, and those people are an occupying force, and they're using the color of the government's authority to harm you. That's addressable, too. And I'm continually to say, the more of us that continue to now focus on that part and start bringing it forward, instead of engaging the system the way most people will, the rules will allow you to do that. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it's not more. It's not as proper as you need. It's not your remedy. And that's so you learn to do this. I think of the more of us that we're asserting this, we're going to we're gonna see this shift pretty quick. Until then, I've got a long r- r- row to hoe for my rutabagas. That's all I can tell you. And so it's not my decision on one hand. My decision is to come here to explain to you that there's a thing you can do. I don't care how many millstones you have on your neck. They can be worked through. And those that are the worst, you just prioritize that. The worst the worst ones, the ones you don't have the time for you right now, you put away. You may not be able to clear yourself up, but you're going to start to relieve the burden over uh, over time here. And so that, anyway, I hope I've clarified a little bit on what I can say, what I can't say. I mean, it's just like I can say lots, but it, it's not relevant to anybody, essentially. And each one of us has a right. You know, we come into the world uh, by ourselves, we're going to be leaving by ourselves. That's that's our life. That's how this thing goes even between the two terminal, you know, life's a terminal event. So before we get to the final, the final stop, you're treated in that very same way. The case-by-case basis is a very important concept to understand. It, it, it definitely addresses the how you treat land rights and then the pertinent rights that come from it. And within that, I can get, pretty much everything I need from uh, for life, if you will, if I can do it, if I can say it that way, to, to sustain myself. It's just not going to be handed to you right now. And those people that are not wanting to you, not actually honor their obligations and duties to the people are the criminals that need to be arrested. And that may take a bit. Some of you may sail through in certain areas. I've seen it happen. Some of you won't. I don't sail through. So I'm I'm not the guy to talk to about, so I'm always looking at this, the fail, there's no silver bullet in my life, ever. Everything ends, I don't care how I try to figure it all out. I do figure it all out, but I'm, I end up walking into the most of severe con- potential consequences which the, with the most elaborate labyrinth to go through is somehow, I, I tend to walk into those. But my, that's what I do. I mean, that's what happens to me. I'm not the guy, I don't live with a silver spoon in my mouth or the right stars that were never in my life apparently. But it doesn't mean that we don't accomplish something. It just means that I'm going to be here at every, every step's going to be the one I have to take. Now, if some of you don't have that, and I'm, I'm really blown away when I see that happen, but that's great because now you get to, you get to move on to the next point or you're, you're done, you've done what you needed to do and now you're, you're free of what those oppression, the oppressions you choose to relieve yourself from. If I could say it that way, it's probably more appropriate. We have these oppressions. Do we? Which ones do we choose to keep on us? And the more, and they're, they have great graded levels of, of difficulty to pull off. But we have to be there. We, we can't use a surrogate. There's nothing, nothing that we can do uh, that we can't rely on anybody else. We can have people help us, but we ultimately can't rely on anybody else's work. And we can't rely on else's, anybody else's authority. We can't rely on anybody else's technology. It, it literally, and it doesn't, you know, law, law of the land, it, it's pretty simple, actually. It's our, it's, a, it's the fact of our, the confusion, the duping, that makes it confusing. And once people get to see that, really, without, without complaint, then they're really, they're looking at the criminal, not, they're not looking at defending their rights either. As I've told you before, you're innocent in this. Literally are. Given you're inside of all that, I mean, you're not going to, you know, no, you're not the criminal going out utilizing what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying and trying to utilize it to take advantage. No, you're not. You're not making your own documents up and trying to make make law and make what you think is the rule law of the land. No, it doesn't work that way either. And if it does, I haven't found anybody in 30 years that's ever done it. Actually, what you see is everybody getting collected up and been put in cages. And I'm shaking my head. Well, there wasn't no need to go there. And so you don't make up your own patents? No, you go to the one the government made. Why Why wouldn't you? Certified copy, why wouldn't you? 
Oh, I don't own property. Well, do you rent? Okay, so we have a problem. You don't understand that if you're a renter, you have a contract with the one who has the assignment. You can derive rights from that. You just have to make that extra step statement and prove it. And you have to know to defend against someone trying to subvert that. If you're asking to me about, well, how do you sustain yourself? That's a two-edged sword. First of all, you're not. And secondly, then it may say, we're not there yet. We don't have enough knowledge in order to be there yet. So don't expect that, that there's a suggestion on how you're going to do it tomorrow. If you aren't... A, a, enjoying being able to sustain yourself because of some interference by anyone or the government, then you haven't learned or haven't engaged that to get the actual ultimate answer. You're just taking the imposition that you're not able to on your own. That's a truth all by itself. Does it mean it's not fixable? But pull you move from there into what you don't understand why you're there into free being so-called free it's just a new type of freedom, a new frame, a new frame of how you're going to respond in your life and through your life and on what's on your life. But if you don't have the answer now, you have to admit you don't have yet, that's fixable, the knowledge in order to not be there. And it may be real simple stuff to learn to get us not there. We tend to be trapped in our own ignorance. I hope you can, I'm being non-judgmental here. Don't think I'm calling anybody ignorant. We're all ignorant of something. But in, partic in particular to certain things, we may have to learn what that ignorance is and then learn how to remove it. Uh, remove, excuse me, the effect of what our ignorance caused. And I have viewed almost all of it. I haven't found yet anything that couldn't, once you look at what the problem is, once you finally understand the problem, it's not all of it's removable. The problem is the pressure of the habit of, of those in government to oppress. And so I hope you, okay, so if we're in a question of how do we sustain ourselves, then we have a, an ignorance that we have to fix and then move to stop that. I think, as I said, you get a mining claim, you have livelihood. Without any other, inf without any other uh, difficulty or, or constraint, that gives you the livelihood that's not in commerce, that's not regulable, that's not encroachable, exclusive to you. And the mining claim, when you're doing the work, as you ought to be, to be to enjoy those rights, uh, you, that will sustain a, a production of, of valuable minerals. Let's just use the, the idea of gold. Uh, that bank gives you the gold. And so now you have a, a way uh, to make, if, you, if I could say it this way, finances. You can, you can fund yourself. And so that's a nice little package. I'm not underneath commerce regulations. I'm not underneath travel regulations and that. Not that, they'll, not that the, the government will want to give that to you. But you at least have a foundation to say you don't have the, you never had the right to interfere. I don't know how many of you folks out there listening to me have that ability right now. And as long as you don't, maybe you won't even understand what I'm saying. You, you go argue with me, whatever. You'll make excuses and all that. And that's why I say you have to get involved somewhere and just start working it out for yourself. And I'll again, I'm here to a, to help guide you in that journey. And I I guarantee I, I can't guarantee anything. I will say that those that have opted for, uh, and it's not an ongoing ongoing thing, but once you start seeing enough, you just run off and do your own thing. You start seeing how it works. Uh, but I, I've offered that I can show you, quicken that a little bit, at least give you a, a new mindset on how to approach this. So let me get onto my tabs because I've always got so much. Knocked off over 300 tabs and I'm still got, I'm building up again because I just don't get to all of it because we're, I don't know, because this, uh, there's just so much. And now I'm getting backed up, and the news comes a week later to tell you what I could tell you a week before. And at some point, that's going to become real important for you all to be able to see that you can start moving before the tsunami hits uh, in lots of areas. Because it's it, we're not doing it, folks. It's just uh, the, the other side is still is, is organized and, and taking you down. And uh, you can complain about it, but it's not going to stop it. But here yeah, I've been critical of uh, AI and quantum computing and all this. A little story pops up, and I thought it was pretty indicative of the condition, so I want, I'm trying to point out we, we need to really start that parallel group. Don't get into the technocracy side. This is what this is pointing out to. This becomes a place of complete control because you have no understanding of it at all, and you'll never get to it because it's all underneath this voodoo, essentially. A quantum benchmarks find suppre and suppresses errors in calculations performed by quantum computers. 
Okay, this is very really important. You got to you have errors. I told you that these uh, the system doesn't like exceptions, and you have to find your way to be the exception. In other words, you have to find the savings clause against the system's encroachment. But here it tells us that there's uh, errors in uh, in these quantum computers. So right off the bat, we're starting from a a problem. And to me, that there's something non-natural about that, because most systems that are natural tend to work okay, notwithstanding the terminal event life is. It seems to be self self checking for the most part, in a positive way. This is like fighting it. But to me, this is all made up anyway. As I've told you, I don't know. Quantum computing is kind of an anomaly to me, although in in the material science, I'm seeing the resolution at the junctions is what they're doing. Now, I've gotten a view of what this quantum computer is, and I just saw a picture in a discussion from an IBM scientist who's working on all this. I saw their machine in a video. Pretty cool looking. But what they do is exactly what I thought they had to do. And these computers aren't what you think they are as far as just running gates and logic. These computers are driven dynamic systems. There's microwave-generated microwave tuned impositions on a silicon substrate that's cooled to close to to zero absolute temperature because they're so frail they're so they're working on the atomic structure and this article tells us that these are working at the atomic scale and they're frail and they're prone listen to the future coming they're these systems are prone to error and when I told you before they had to tune this, these circuits, they could make two, para, two similar chip circuits and tune them, they should be coming out with the same answer. It appears to be what they're doing here, but they're driven systems by microwave tuning. So you have 10 channels, 10 microwave. If you want to talk about more microwave radiation, that's what they're bringing on. They're forcing in energy to cause spins of atoms, left, right, or null. Per, and it's cool stuff. I don't, don't underestimate what they're doing. I think it's cool. But we're turning our future over to this, and this is my caution to you. And to me, it's not what it appears. And now we find admission. It's prone to error. But this company, so-called TrueQ Software, has solved the problem of the errors. But what got me in this story is what they're talking about, and the admission about this technology, and why we're going to need to really understand us our, as people and interact with ourselves, not through this digital medium, not through these technocratic uh, tools, which they control. Like I keep telling you about blockchain eventually here. Oh, it's in your hands right now. You but you watch. I've been telling you how they've been making their own. And this is all tied together eventually. <laughs> on your quantum uh, bits and the scariness about all the how they're going to keep control of all this and how they're going to peer into everything. Well, they might be able to, but it's going to be because they've worked out something else. But this quantum computing has is prone to errors. And it's going to be a major overhead problem to keep the errors from happening. And then that is only going to be based on the probability that they could. If you can start to hear the problem already. So this company is supposed to have made the solution. And so he says, this gentleman Emerson, and so we have actually provided the solution. Remember I talked about uh, dispute resolution and the solution is the outcome they want. It's not really an answer. It's not a remedy. It's a solution. Well, a targeting solution. Yeah, this is all the military talk. Uh, we have a, we have actually provided the solution, and we have provided that solution is in a very robust way. And this is based on two decades of research from my team. Few people cared about the issue of these errors here when he started researching, Emerson started researching 15 years ago, but that changed as more advanced prototypes were developed. He said because quantum computers use atomic particles, the technology is inherently fragile and prone to errors. All right? I want you to keep that in your mind, but forever. They're never going to get rid of this that I can, well, I say, we always say never, but I can't perceive in, in the material science that we understand now and into the near future how they can fix a problem with this. That they already understand the ones who work with it have for decades known of this problem. That it's fragile and prone to errors. When they got to go from absolute zero 
to keep the atoms from moving so they can drive them with their microwaves, more radiation, to maintain spins or nulls, and then factor those through, they need an overburden of a software. We're no longer in the system now in order to check for errors. This is like error correction. That's a burden on the system. This is not a natural system. This is what they've done in the chips. Intel inside has done with the chips. It's caused their problems as well today that they took 20 or 30 years to ignore. And it bit them. But it's biting you and you're not able to do much about it. It's the future in these quantum uh, hot, inherently fragile and prone to error systems. A bigger and more powerful quantum computers, as big and bigger and more powerful com quantum computers are built, the chance of error increases. Emerson said, potentially reaching a 50 50 chance that answers produced by the machine are correct. That's the same probability as a tossed coin. And there's your money paragraph. So they've got to work an error correction overburden on top of this to try and make sure the probability they've corrected the error. They don't have the knowledge of it. Again, this is all the way this works in the future. Remember the climate change, the statistical relationship on an unproven hypothesis. It's just made up stuff. And they get you to buy in. It's all public buy-in. And they're the ones, they're like the Wizard of Oz. They tell you they can correct, but who knows? But they're prone. As these computers, already, as these computers get larger and larger, it's not going to be any better than a coin toss. How is it any better now, folks? They're already knowing it's prone to error and fragile, and they've, had to, they've been working on error systems all ever since until apparently the solution here to it all. But this is the fragility of the system, the technocratic system that they're getting you to buy into. It's such a problem. Google is part of, has, has already invested in this company. Yeah, you think they got a problem? You, they know they have a problem. And so they're going to grab up the first solution because it's not an easy problem to fix. And it's only a probability. Only a probability. Remember, all this quantum stuff, so it's nonsense to my mind, is on a, based on a probability that they're correct. And that's your future. And that's your, your blockchain. And that's your AI. Your AI is going to be looking. You think A, see, this is going to be this true Q, whatever, is going to be AI. It's going to be making the decisions. And guess what? As I was thinking about this, because it's a, a coin toss, they can, they can track it any way they want. They can build in whatever it is they want. They, the, the ultimate programmer of the outcome. And it's magic beyond your comprehension. I mean, you try to figure your phone out. You tell me if you understand your phone. It's already beyond this. I have a slight idea in the, in the, in the, in the, in the being an R&D chip, um, in a jar, a research and development chip manufacturer. I've got a fair idea about it. And it's already kind of got beyond what I was into. And they're going to go into these, uh, Rube Goldberg, conditions it's a coin toss what they're talking to you about and you tell me is it logic to you that someone has figured out how to fix a coin toss that's absurd it's just a coin toss they're going to tell you oh that was supposed to be heads and it's tails is that true it'll be true if they get you to buy into that that their solution is the answer to something that's fragile and prone to error and i want i don't want you to forget this Again, nothing's perfect in nature even. And they're trying to make it perfect. The advantage of the going to this state, I, hope, I wish they could do it some way else, is really just adding that extra third bit, how primitive we are. We can only use yes or no. That, that's our logic. Well, this technology allowed the third bit, which is, could be null, no spin. And that was, that's a huge jump. So you can see it doesn't take many bits to actually start doing some pretty interesting, cool things. But they're not doing it in a unfragile or error-free environment. And so that's to me, is a notice to y'all, those of you that can figure this out, I mean, do it, because the hardware needs to be made. We need to figure out a way to stop all this nonsense. And I don't, again, I don't think it's quantum what they're dealing with. I think they're doing, as I said, when they started driving frozen silicone, bond, essentially uh, the same technology in a computer, when they started driving channels in the circuit, they started determining 
the uh, the outcome. The resolution went way up, but but you see the the error is prone because of the smallness of the thing that they're dealing with. And they're in control of the whole system. It's tuned by them. This is IBM. Okay? So don't forget who we're dealing with here as we move this through. Uh, for those of us less esoteric on the uh, or less quantum leaping, uh, P PSA here, uh, Snoopware installed in 11 million iOS, uh, Android, Chrome, and Firefox users. There are lots of plugins anymore, apparently, folks, that are just something you can't have on your, on your apps. The apps themselves are surveillance devices. Uh, they are, again, causing error in your system. Uh, the, this is what the future holds. This is, this is how this is going to work. These systems themselves will be no good apps, if you will. And we're going to be forced, if we're not, if we're not, not stopping, not, not pointing it out, we're going to be forced into having to. I mean, I don't know how many things I don't get to do because I just won't get a phone. I've already identified on minds.com I'm a second class citizen. They're not fixing that. Oh, they'll say we get to use the tokens. I, I don't even trust them now. But you really can't enjoy the site. You can only do certain things. But as soon as it gets to finances, folks, I'm telling you this is where the connection is. You're all of a sudden in a regulable commodity. And you're going to pay with that registration. Or you don't participate. Or you participate to some level, level less. This is what this is all about. You're not going to get into finances of any kind without being registered somehow and somewhere. And then you're going to be in the technocratic future controlled by error-prone, fragile systems. All controlled. Somebody running a lot of levers uh, to try to keep the thing looking stable. And you won't know that it's wrong. How would you know what it's wrong? Well, except your bottom line, the balance. And then they just, what do they do? What do they do there? Oh, if we can find there was a big anomaly, we're just going to guarantee that value. We'll just replug it in. Sorry. Or, oops, it's gone and you got no recourse. And you're seeing that in all the social media. You're seeing all the energy it takes to change that. And I'm wanting you to focus it inside the system, inside your browsers. And as a, you'll get the link to this article. There's a whole bunch of plugins and stuff you can get, extensions that you use, uh, that steal away uh, capacity or data or get into your system and take your information and take all your passwords uh, in your all digital blockchain future they're going to take all these numbers away from you you won't have a clue you won't have a clue and that's the probably the most insidious problem as I told you those are going to be more dangerous even than the government is at some point we can get the government to be outed and we did that here uh, for you all if you hadn't heard about it gee uh, this is in Europe and it should be actually around the world uh, GCHQ cart, cartel, uh, carte blanche. Yeah, cartel. Uh, C, uh, GCHQ's carte blanche powers to snoop on UK citizens ruled unlawful. Now, so we kick us over to the FISA court in America, and we're seeing that's a rubber stamp, and there's been articles about that, about how that works. So this is the plan, folks. It's, it's just global. This didn't happen by accident. Your 911 changed in America. No, it didn't. It would just change how you were going to perceive uh, what they were going to use to, to do you in. Uh, the British government broke a law for more than a decade. You know, swift justice, folks? For more than a decade, as long as I've been broadcasting, apparently. We know it's been longer than that. Uh, by handing GCHQ powers to snoop on UK citizens' data without strict oversight from the Foreign Office, an independent tribunal has ruled. Uh, uh, okay, so they, they go to 9-11, see where it starts. GCHQ has been given substantial new powers to retrieve and analyze citizens' data after 9-11, terrorist attacks in nine, New York in 2001, uh, on the prerequisite, prerequisite that the surveillance agency agreed to strict oversight uh, from the Foreign Secretary of the day. Strict oversight is a rubber stamp, folks. See, this is all set up. Anyway, so we find out today the surveillance that the governments are doing generally is, is illegal. But it took 10 years to get there, and a lot of that, I think, is because none of us step, stepped up in the right way. We, we just do our complaining. And we continue to go down the path uh, that they want us on. We're still not free of this stuff. You think they went away? You think because of this they went away? No, this is the unaccountability that we continue to agree with as peoples everywhere. And, uh, and we have, as I see it, we have no capacity to, as I explained last week, 
you tell people where they have to go call, and then they fight you, who you have to write to, to who has the, in the government hierarchy, who has the authority to do something. You tell them to do that, and they go, well, no, why are you going to do that? Because that's the way you're supposed to do it. Well, I don't want to do it that way. Well, okay, I don't know what to say more. It means I'm going to the system. Well, that's what that's that's the thing that's beating on you. What are you going to do? Most people will just agree to be be beat on. That's I mean sad, but that's what it is. So we have government always making decisions again for themselves. It's only un unlawful. None of us stepped up to call it out. We complain about it, but I say put that into action, folks. That's the evolutionary action. Actually move that into something you can do. Given you have nothing else that you want to do, do that. Focus on uh, bringing that forward. I would ask you to do it with integrity so that we don't become what we see out in the world now, a bunch of nonsense regurgitated that has no basis. That's why I also focus on land disposal law, because that's got a foundation right from the ground. It's got the law, the grant, the authority, now the relationship, and the evidence. There's nothing to question. Nothing. No opinions are needed. Nothing. And the pertinent rights from that, it, it spreads out from there for pertinent rights, maybe four or five on land. I got four or five more rights I get, uh, that are, are supposed to be granted to me, not, not, and, in, and unmolested. All factual. Nothing's an opinion. Nothing's a court case. Nothing's an, a precedent. Nothing. And and so we, we're doing a whole different track the way I'm talking and been trying to perform uh, what we do and what seems to work even though it takes some time because we're we're up against a bunch of people that even goodwill people that are just going to be resistant because it doesn't sound it sounds different than what their the new normal that's been trained all their life into them is. So the government of UK was unlawfully snooping. Uh, you guaranteed the United States is doing it. We see the FISA court being a big rubber stamp. Where are we to stop it? We we aren't anywhere. So they continue. They continue on and on and on. They'll do the harm against you. They decide against you. You think you know we can move it on through the agency? You think you think that their their drug people over there are doing any different than the United States? Uh, the, the drug people here in their agencies and how they keep things from you? We just heard last week that the UK is just now coming around to the fact their scientists are saying, hey, well this this drug marijuana uh, cannabis actually does something good. It does have medical benefits. They're afraid that everybody's going to find out and use it for every little thing. But anyway, doesn't matter. We're now seeing a porcelain break. It's against the law what they're doing to people, as I've been telling you. The color of the authority that's caused the prohibition against people. I'm not talking about necessarily marketing at this point, the commerce side of it. I'm going to leave that out for the moment. To make it simple, to make the narrow path discussion and observation. When they stopped people from using a plant that helped them, they were committing crimes against those people. Those people had inherent rights to protect themselves and to cure themselves or to treat themselves. So they still get in the way because they got they got this mindset in them. They're people that want to interfere with everybody, the do-gooders. And they come under the color of the authority and say, well, okay, we'll give you, we're finding out this stuff can do something here. But we're not, we don't want it to spread out. Well, you all have to step up and say you don't have, now that you've agreed to one, you don't have the right to do any of it all. You've just shown us that you breached our, you didn't care about us the entire time and you don't care about us now. Even though you're saying you're caring about us. If you cared about us, you'd leave us alone. Right? You can you'll complain to the chat rooms about this, but you won't actually step forward and persist with that and more. There's a whole lot more coming. As I keep telling you to build your facts to bring this stuff forward. This is what you're going to have to do no matter what you do. You find the millstones around your neck that's been put on you by government today. You've got some millstones to pull off. The, what I'm telling you how to approach that works in all these areas. Until you get some of those millstones off, you're not going to be able to be willing to even. You don't have a clue about going after what I've been talking about. And I know that, but I just want to keep saying it anyway. Maybe if I say it long enough, someone you, some of you will break through and, and actually be able to do some of this stuff to help the rest of us. So what, what have we talked about last year is in the news again. The government, the GCQ, we go over the, 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 they are violating the law. I say that the governments violate the law in lots of places. When you start looking at this a little bit more, di a little clearer in my mind, not just because, oh, it's a government. No, it's because there are standards that they've been violating, and everybody's been crickets to that. And I'm offering ways to start breaking that down. 
How do we peel that bro- boiled egg? How do we do something good with it now that it is a boiled egg? But uh, the governments will avoid to the nth degree everything they can that you don't keep in their face. If you're occupied w- with with what you have to do, you're not going to be looking at what they do. And this is the other thing. Our health is our first thing, our first detriment. And then our political, if you are civil, civic, I should say, civic health is our other thing that they keep us diminished in. And that's a, du- a dual path because we, as I'm telling you, the civic health is really protected already. So anytime someone requires you to step up and have to have a civic voice, there's probably a violation going on. But we've never addressed it that way. But moving on to what the decisions of the government make and the findings of stuff that we were talking about, uh, they don't really care about you. You have to care about yourself, and you have to act in your own defense. You have to find the facts that are now coming out, now that they're able, and the Internet now becomes our our tool, notwithstanding any surveillance, notwithstanding any in- interferences, notwithstanding anything, actually, to find out what they're doing, what the, what's out there that's being that's being uh, helping. We did. We now come up, as I've been trying to show you week to week, the because I think it's it's moving in the right direction. And there's a it's a momentum. It's the only probably the only reason why I'm really interested in this. I'm really via my mind. My spirit is violated that people are being harmed continuously by this. But I know that there's some of you that should be able to take this on. And every time we come across, I come across this news. You can use this as evidence to help build the case. To help, if you're not yourself, maybe even other people. But in, in particular, if it is for yourself, you now have for you the millstone of the prohibition against you. You can start to relieve it for you. Remember, there's been a couple cases I've brought, I've reported where people stood up for themselves, and they were protected when they showed that there was no other legalized help that could come to them, and it or and better that it, that legalized help was actually a detriment. That's how you have to come after something that's a prohibition. And the prohibition comes whether they criminalize it or regulate it as a, as a, as a regulated crime versus a, a sentenceable crime. You, you want to deregulate this stuff. You want to get it off, off the administrative side. You want to get it non-criminalized. That puts it back into the area of production, as I've been talking to you about, that wasn't supposed to be trespassed. Uh, so we have to go through the long way. Why? Because we've let the we let the mice play as the cats. We let we went away and the mice would play. But we, here we have some more proof for those of you that want to groundbreaking research. Cannabis treats ADHD better than Adderall. See, I, I only read the I only read the the, the the report. In fact, I just thought about it. I think even Grimner was reporting on this on Freaker's Ball. Uh, I don't I don't really want to read it. Just read the title. Here's those of you that are interested in this, have one more thing here that shows that what is promoted by the medicine system, not a medicine man, the medicine system, it's all fabricated. What they offer is not as good as something you can find naturally. Here's another report. It's evidence. Not only is it evidence that this cannabis does something, it's evidence that it does it better. And if you bring both those in anything you do, as I told you, you just can't say, oh, I have a right to use the roads. You you have to bring how you have that right. You can't just say, I'm not your straw man. You have to present an, an existence that's outside of what they will presume you to be. You, oh, and that's because we're underneath this oppression. Otherwise, it would be recognized up front. We wouldn't even be talking about it. Groundbreaking research: Cannabis treats ADHD better than Adderall. Big story here. Big report. You need, if you're interested, this is the things you pull together to start making a case against the DEA, against any government, against any imposition. And I ask you to pull in the land disposal rights to do so as well, and get yourself on the production side. As it, as I point out, when you get into a livelihood working a land that's called a mineral deposit. You it reject you're able to reject all kinds of so-called uh, civil benefits, and you become more self-reliant. How you're going to go about that is you know there's there's you got to go look at each point. I can't I'm not going to cover that on the on the air because it becomes a silver bullet 
uh, that everyone thinks they can now use, and it's a, and I end up having a loaded gun to people, and they go hurt themselves with. It. So I don't I don't offer those 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 pathways. When you know enough, I can suggest them to you, and you'll see them pretty readily. In fact, when I suggest the right path, most people start finding it out on their own. But here we have more more proof that we would take a thing denied by a government agency, the medical use of something. That's a plant, no less. It's not a manufactured thing. It's not within a system requiring license anyway. But it has a medical use. And it has a medical use greater than the one that is legalized. The crime against you called pharmaceuticals. So we have to really... Listen, I, I, I can't. We, I always say we have to, and I, something tr- hits me in the back of the head. We don't have to do anything, and that's where we are. We're the crickets right now. So, for those of you that don't, that are, will, will know that there's something wrong, and want to, and do complain, or don't, you know, just complain. I I'm, don't know what more to say. There's ev- There's a way through this. There's a way to bring back and start showing the government. See, to me, this is the more important statement. There's a way to show the government authorita for what it is, the authorita. There's a way to show it's duped us. There's a way to show those in the government are wrong. They've built a spaghetti western society around us, and we didn't go around knocking down the false fronts. You have to stop making criminals out of people. Uh, to, in this, here we have the fact that you have someone using the uh, cannabis to treat ADHD and they're in prison. If they knew to present this would be the difference in all the world. But they don't. And we don't. And as a society, we don't. It is our problem. It really, I mean, that's the basis of our problem. And so here's a story. You can read it. I mean, here it is. I'm not going to go read read it more because... The balance of this is whether or not uh, we have the evidence to show that the government's been wrong and persist to be wrong. They don't want you. This also proves what? It proves they want to do what I've been telling you, that they want to promote the bottom line, even if it isn't as good or even if it harms you. The bottom line being their licensees that produce all these business and and, uh, profit, if you will. They they profit in a debt system. But at any rate, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Okay, so we got to stop the criminalization. We have to stop the deregulation. If there's no power in an agency to regulate, you deregulate, right? You just stop the regulation you have. Those places that don't have it yet aren't regulate, shouldn't regulate it. So there's nothing to deregulate at that point. You just don't make it a crime. Not even administratively where you have regulation. And I told you this years and years ago when I saw it and read the laws that were coming through. I said, these were written by lawyers, and they're written by, uh, look like corporate lawyers, and there's a future that they want. And you can't all, you all can't go there. For as much as it would be cool to have this stuff legalized, you can't go there. You have to alter, offer the alternative. Well, it didn't go that way in a lot of places. Some of you that don't have these laws in these states, um, just decriminalizing pot in either criminal side or agency side, you still have a chance to do this. Those that do have legalization, you got to work to throw it off, and this is how you start to do it. You just say, how about if you just stop messing with the plant? Let, let us decide that we want to use it for whatever we want to use it for. Again, there's enough laws out there for harm done. When you go and trespass someone else's property, you already live in this non-aggressive principle, but you're not enjoying it. As long as you're not aggressive, everyone is fine. When you are aggressive, there's a remedy that's pres- that's allowed objectively to everyone who has been harmed by someone who's not. I don't know why that's such a big problem, but anyway. So without going too far, the, much farther, uh, reason why this becomes important as well. We talked about ADHD. We also know that it treats this cannabis treats cancer. So we have a report here that says Adderall is it works better than Adderall. Well, what about better than cancer treatments? And what did I say that the government wants to promote the bottom line and the corporations that are given license to this want to promote their bottom line as well, special interest and, and, and conflict of interest. Report, IBM Watson AI recommended unsafe cancer treatments. Hits the, t- hits the news right now. 
Then you get this, folks? AI. What did I say about the error prone? See, it's not just error prone in the hardware. It's error prone in the outcome. Garbage in, garbage out. Misunderstanding in, misunderstanding out. No understanding in, garbage out. I, mean, I don't know what to say more th about that. But here it is that the government is actually allowing a so-called AI, pattern recognition system, in a normal computer. If you think it's going to get it's bad now when you see this, wait till it gets into 50-50 coin toss. Is that what you want? Is that your life, coin, a coin toss that they claim to be able to fix? A probabilistic fix? IBM has put its Watson artificial intelligence system to work on a variety of problems, including caring for cancer patients. Watson's oncology system has helped care for 84,000 patients around the world. And while the tech company says the pro program is a success, a stat news report says internal documents tell a different story. Here's your internal document problem, right? This is the privacy kept from you, the non-disclosure. The publication reviewed a document from 2017 in which the medical experts discussed multiple examples of unsafe and incorrect treatment recommendations. In one example, a patient was recommended a drug that led to severe or fatal hemorrhage while he was already dealing with severe bleeding due to this condition. In another example, the Florida doctor who viewed the system told the company that the technology is a piece of... You fill in the blank. Not good. Well, unless you're looking for compost. ID, IBM, uh, you know, it's another process, but uh, not on its own. IBM uh, engineers and doctors who helped train the AI, provided Watson with data about the hypothetical patients and treatments instead of data from real living patients, the report says. And now, as I told you before, looking at uh, a feed uh, from a bunch of the geneticists and scientists that want to say that they got the answer, they don't look at living patients. They don't look at specific conditions. Your health is a specific condition. It's not a statistic. These people that are in the scientific realm now, these what I call adjective science, they live by some other name attached to their science. Their political lobbyists is what they end up being, as I've identified all this stuff in the documents from 1985, as they admitted it to us. Nobody deals in living people with their problem. And we see this AI is fed full of that stuff. The company plans to take client feedback into consideration and plans to update the system. Well, that's just, what, outcome-based comment periods, right? At any rate, some doctor that's involved says it, it's, it was only, and it, when we find out it was only supposed to be doing a, a few cases, they're not supposed to be applying Watson to all the cancer cases that they are, but they're doing it anyway. Again, the license they give themselves once you let vac, vac, Dracula in the door. IBM Watson AI recommended unsafe cancer uh, treatment should be about all you need to know at this point, but it's not doesn't stop there. The, the veterans, folks, you, got, you folks that are veterans and got cancer diagnosis, that they're extending beyond cancers, the five or eight, whatever they're supposed to, you're the one that have a, the IBM has a contract to, to help to, to serve. And so PSA, Public Service Announcement, you veterans who are getting cared and you find out that Watson was supposed to augment the decision, you better have a, a secondary opinion somewhere to find out whether or not you're, you're, not, you're being misprescribed. The government doesn't really care. And they're not prescribing cannabis, are they? Even though we're having a lot of, even anecdotal proof, that, that you should at least have the ability to try it. And they won't allow that. They're going to let AI and quantum IBM computers make these decisions. And the, it's not just the inherent the, the error and fragility of the hardware. It, the, that, that's the AI itself is fragile. The error correcting that they think they're going to do in the, in the quantum side is not going to fix this. And no amount of, of, of attaching data to just any database of the unliving is going to fix you. Again, it's all probability. Do you want to live with that, or do you want someone looking at you and, and taking the vitals that you have to have and looking at the condition and recognizing what has to happen, understanding what the drug interactions are, understanding what, they, what they're what they actually doing, which means that they probably aren't going to be able to do most of what they're trying to tell you that they can do, 
Uh, anyway, don't you want someone doing that instead of just handing it over to Watson? Who then will eventually be on an a, a, a quantum computer that is fragile and prone to error? 50-50 coin toss? Is that what we're looking at? Sure we are. And the government does what? Comes along and it it buys into this stuff. It gives IBM the right to look at the veterans, the veterans hospital, and expand an experiment beyond its capacity. Did you know that, you veterans out there? And if you didn't, maybe you should check into this and go find out what there might be that's going on that's beyond, beyond what they thought they allowed it. And then in those of you that are in that, maybe re rethink about whether or not it should be allowed to even suggest anything, given it's really, is it a 50-50 coin toss? Do you know? It's, ba it's based on data, folks. It's best science. Do you want to live that? Again, this is all the tale of the tape here. I don't know what more to say about a lot of this. It doesn't get better here, and we're being quiet. And we wonder why people are are, are being hurt. And we wonder why veterans are committing suicide. Notwithstanding the pharmaceuticals may be causing it, that may be Watson prescribed. And that is going under the radar. How, how, you know, you, we don't know. It's, it's magic beyond us at that point. It is in the, in the area that that's how they, well, they're the priests. And yet they're killing you. These are uh, sacrifices for reasons. Remember, we also heard the, the uh, officer that was talking about finding out about the vaccines. Gulf War syndrome was in soldiers who got vaccinations but never left Alabama. And she says, is the reason why the government wants to kill you all off? Maybe there's a reason why they want to do 50-50 through quantum computers and your care. Maybe there's a reason why they're giving you uh, wrong treatments in pharmaceuticals. When what? When we find out that there's a might be, it might be, might be an option in cannabis. And we, we hear that there might be an answer for all this too. And it kind of addresses two things. Watson wouldn't give you the option of cannabis. No, he's going to do wrong, wrong, uh, outcomes. But the people helping themselves might help in a lot of areas. See, some of the things that Watson's going to give, give you are opioids, aren't they? Cause you just got a lot of pain. And they want to keep you there. So you want to keep, so they want to keep, so they can keep giving those opioids. And that's become an epidemic. And they don't shut Watson down from not giving it, I'll bet. But this is the best science, right? This is the 50 50 coin toss of your life. As VA continues to hook veterans on dangerous opioids, local growers offer them free cannabis out of Santa Cruz. So here we have some people that are in the business of growing cannabis, offering it to vets to g help get them off opioids. And I would say because of what uh, Watson, now we find out IBM Watson is extended, uh, being used, extended beyond what it was planned for, and only had those few cancers ba understood for non-living uh, data points, these is probably a better, a better approach. You at least are offered the ability by people who see that the government's not going to help you. you? Hear about oh, who's going to fill the potholes? Well, to me, that's just a stupid discussion. Minor, like I said, we have to go out and put lots of money and keep the roads going I mean, for us to get into our claim. So, to me, forget the pothole. I mean, that's not even a discussion for most of y'all. Maybe it is. Who's going to fill the potholes? Well, we we just we have to smooth that out every year where we are. No one pays us. Same same thing here. Who's going to help the vets when the government doesn't? Who's going to fill the potholes the opioids create? Well, people stepping up. And I say thank you to them for looking out for other people. Now, why this doesn't get bigger, I don't know. But that, if that works, if they can show that people are getting relief, isn't that another proof? If those of you that are wanting to see this, this uh, obstruction to, listen, even having to think about this, is an obstruction by the government. That you have to deal with it at all, that when it shouldn't be dealt with at all, is an obstruction. Those of you that want to end this once and for all, instead of legalizing and decriminalizing, whatever the heck is going on, you 
find out whether or not this program is being utilized. Go make some phone call, do some research, find out who's being take, who's taking it up, find out if they'll talk with you, find out how they get, how they care for themselves. Is more facts that it works for something and that nobody should be oppressed or prohibited from getting it anywhere. You could be one of those people to do that where no one else has thought about doing it before because it's just so big right we can't do so much i need so much to do no you just need you focusing on the right way who owns uh, another story who owns diseases I, I said there's a policy you name it you own it you get a mining claim you name the mining claim when you get a mining claim that's a very powerful thing to start to understand when they name the disease they own it don't they when they make books about it, they make evidence, don't they, that they exist, they, even though if they're made up. Psychiatry is completely made up. No support for any of it. Who owns disease? The ones that make it up. And the ones that keep uh, keep saying it's something that they need to prescribe to you. Does, Wat, does IBM's Watson, do they get told this? Well, in a way they do. In a way that machine does because it's only told to work on what it's been given, isn't it? What it gave, just like y'all. You've been gave what you've been gave. you got all the millstones around your neck wondering why i got millstones around my neck. Don't even know how. Try to take them off. Don't even know how to try to take, begin to take them off. you got to come to terms with that. Once you, once you start coming to terms with it, you are becoming a little bit quicker to how to start to remove all that stuff. Who owns disease? John Rappaport's story. you got two, two of them together. Uh, the ones who create them and the ones to get and those that make you believe they exist. Do they, do, does disease, disease not exist? Well, no, it does exist. But is it on their terms? Is it by their names? Well, when you read the, read the article from John Rapport, he said that there's no foundation for most all of it. It all has the same symptoms I've talked to you about. So I got snivelly nose, I got what, weeping eyes, I got a cough, I got a fever. And they dragged that out to be 2,000 different diseases. Is there some real stuff going on underneath? Absolutely there is. So don't think I'm destroying the whole idea that you're not, you may be sick or not. Something's going on that ain't right. It's dis-ease. You're not at ease. You're not at peace. Something's invaded your system and you haven't gotten rid of it or you've allowed it in or you've let your system, your borders break down and something got into you. Another fractal. And so we give over to the make up, the naming of these things and the property that they have in those that make them up. And then you go in and are diagnosed with it. Then you get to be treated by their drugs. And then where do you think that their drugs are coming from? Everything else in this project, that I, this thing today, all the things you don't know about that we just take for granted. That someone else is looking out for our best interest. And it's not the truth. Absolutely not the truth. And the problem, is, like I was entering in the broadcast for the first uh, half hour or so, you are finally having to take responsibility for yourself for the first time in your life. It's not easy. And so it's going to take it's a transition time in all that. But where do we get our stuff from? Is it all good? I'm not so sure. After reading this report, bang, another China vaccine scandal. Another one from John Rappaport. He's telling you that the Food and Drug Administration agrees to have the imports of all these things from China, and they do not meet the needs, uh, the, the the standards. They're made in in systems and facilities that are have serious violations of law. It's a big deal right now about the tainted products coming out of China. And you're not told about this. And you're not told what you're getting or where it is. And so you see, is, is Watson going to tell you about that? No, no, no. It's just a it's just a formal, formulaic thing that goes on. Chinese parents, pharma industry, worried sick about latest vaccine scandal. So you want to get vaccines, folks? Do you want to get stuff that's subpar even if when you did want to get them? You have to read these stories here. They're telling us. This is all the notice to us that we, we should be paying attention to. I, mean, I just read the headlines here. I don't even know what to say. If you're not aware, there's like one going going PSA today. If you're not aware, the vaccines that you are getting are being made in substandard ways and imported from other countries. Here's your first notice. And uh, I say go read the data product sheet because that's probably why it's there. And it's all legal. No, it's not. It's illegal until it's sold, right? 
until they get caught, it's legal. Why? Because it's been given, it's been given the, the, the seal of approval. What's interesting about this story is this came from the CFR.org people. They're even calling attention to this problem that John Rappaport is explaining to you as well about vaccines. Not only are they questionable, they have no basis. They're made up. They're not understood on how they work either. They're now made to do things to the body in order to make them look like they're doing something. Then they're done wrong on top of it all. Now, where do you put the causation? And maybe that's why, as I was talking to you before when you addressed the agencies, maybe that's why they actually don't look at causation. Because they'd have to go look at all the things that they wink and a nod allow to come through, and you, it's not disclosed to you. So the CFR.org story is pretty interesting because this is the listen to the enemy, right? Listen to the enemy. They're talking to it about it. It's now becoming a real problem. They didn't tell you about all this problem, did they? And they're probably not going to. Oh, it might stampede the herd. Oh, yeah. And so you can sit back and keep feeling the victim or just to not do them and let someone else get them or whatever. Or you can find this important enough to step up and, and take the evidence of this problem and make it make it something. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, this is the problem. We don't want to really step up. We'd rather complain. I, I see this all the time. We want to complain. I, mean, I complain myself, but I mean, at some point, you got to stop and say, "Okay, I've got, I have this problem. How am I going to resolve this problem? Can't resolve all the problems, but I can resolve this one. Which one is it, and how? And then I got to take my take my steps." And so, did they also, when they were doing this fabrication or this uh, this facility, a substandard facilities products that are being imported in to the country, underneath the auspices that it's good medicine and and all that certified. These standards, as I keep telling you, the stakeholders that are involved, we have another story here. But who's involved in making the policies that allow whatever is agreed to, to come into you and you take and have to take, because that's all that there is. GMO giant BASF unveiled as a member of an organic trade association. And that wasn't the only one. This trade association was really littered full of the so-called stakeholders, these these people who have conflict of interest in in the very associations that they're in, the Genghis Khans of, of of the subject matter, that are making the policy that we all think and do nothing about, but we all think that they're out there to protect us. And then this story goes on and on. I, mean, I can just read the story. It's it's more than just BASF. It was a lot of other chemi- chemical and agri companies involved in an association that makes policy, United States Organic Trade Association, making the policies and being the stakeholders for the what is organic in this country. And then we wonder why we have to laugh when we talk about organic. Or as I told you before, when you look in the statutes, organic is 95% cool. They don't tell you, you don't even think about the 5% that's not. But organic is 95% good. 5% 5% can be whatever. Where do you think that little rule? Why, why don't you think something more wholesome wasn't made? And we see slowly this error creeping into our system is self-inflicted by the system itself. Now, we'll complain about the government, but we won't complain about our not uh, not stepping in to, to be a uh, force to be reckoned with within that. And these policies are being made by the com- companies. And we trust them. And we trust them to our future. And we see the quantum stuff they're working on is all going to be no different than flipping a coin. We wonder why we look around in the insanity of the world because if this is what's going on, th- this would explain why we got so much so much nonsense, all these conundrums that pop up. One AI program makes this decision. Another AI program makes a contrary decision. And they're supposed to coexist. It was our best sciences. And we just watch the we watch the roulette wheel go around on our bet. We don't even get the advantage of a coin toss, at least being fifty for fifty, right, or fifty fifty wrong. But here comes this self conflicted, error prone system, technocracy in the future, and gene modification specialist companies who could care less about the mutagenic problems 
All the scientists who want to promote that of which will tell you, oh, well, nature creates mutagenic problems all the, problems all the time, so it's the same. GM babies, folks. I told you this a few years ago. It was around the corner. Here it is. I don't even know how fast it was. A couple of years. I said when they started to breach the idea, broach the idea, breach, yes, broach the idea of being able to fix people by DNA manipulation, it was going to be a short time when they're going to start designing people. GM babies, important to remember, it's still very experimental, professor says. No kidding, folks. I don't need a professor to tell me if I'm just looking at the basics of gene modification. The best that we have causes problems. Remember, the EU said, no, it, gene modification, it doesn't matter how you gene modify, you CRISPR, Cas9, or whatever, it's still modifying genes. We're not going to let you come underneath some, because you claim it to be some natural process, no different than a natural process in its final product, that we're not going to let you do that. It's like been tossed out here when they say last week genetically modified babies were given an okay by UK's leading ethics body. I told you specifically the ethics people would be the ones that allowed it. And here it is. The Nutfield Council on Bioethics. Nutfield, not uh, Nutfield, yeah, Nutfield. A genome editing can only be permitted if it's in the child's best interest, according to the council's report. Who makes that decision, folks? Watson? Enough. I, I'll just stop right there. Enough said. I don't need to even go anymore. What they say at the benefit of the children, how they say they're benefiting children, the women, the children, the indigenous, is the mantra of the globalist, folks. I keep showing it to you in the UN. We keep talking about it periodically throughout the years. It's what they use. You don't hear a man in there being protected. No, the women, the children, indigenous, pulling on the heartstrings of what traditional societies did do. Not that they're going to do it, but they pull on the heartstrings to get you to feel like these people are going to be doing good for you. So what do we find out in the global construction of stuff, how it actually implements? Neighbors reporting child trafficking and, and find government contractors holding kids, little goats, kids in black site prisons, as they quote, as they name them. When concerned neighbors called police because they believed Dozens of children were tra being trafficked in their neighborhood. They learned that the children were actually being held in black site prison operated by defense contractors. So conflict of interest, bottom line, military, folks. You just keep looking at this consistent thing. This is what's going on down in Arizona relative to the immigrant thing. This is the global uh, uh, agreement. And remember, I told you the A21 was saying the immigration, the receiving state's going to make money and the, and the departing state's going to make money. And their ultimate function is to degrade both societies and bring them into, into sustainable debt. And the way you do that is you destroy their families. And so we have a military contractor involved in the, I, I can't see it, they're making money on this, is trafficking of people right there at the border. It took people to see this was going on because it wasn't being called out. And when the people said, hey, there's something going on, the government said these people are licensed to do this. To me, that that's all I need to hear. This is, again, the crime that's regulated. I don't know why why we make it any bigger than that. As soon as we hear something's regulated, it's a crime. And as long as you do that crime within the regulation then you're doing okay as a criminal. The government agrees with you. And you get to exploit that condition. And there's been a whole bunch of stories that went on and that I had together long before I'll now touch them. Of the global policy here. Remember, women, children, and the indigenous is how to care for people. It's not really how to care for them. It's how to care for your bottom line. It's how to care for control. It's how the government cares for its, uh, these the people in government, cares for how it's going to continue that. And this, so the, to me, this migrant issue really isn't an issue that way. To me, this is people in utilizing, exploiting the system in order to exploit people. And we hear it coming out. And we also hear it on a subject matter that I've told you I was involved in, pretty, pretty integrated with, to find it out to do a documentary was in child services, and I would say this is like adult services. This is in the in 2000. And and to me, all these stories weren't 
weren't um, a surprise. As I've told you, you can tell and, and, and translate this out, the, the ripple keeps going on these things, that you'll see this done over and over, where government and its corporations and its people in government are sanctioned to abuse people under the color of doing them good. And you all agree to that. Like you agree to your medicine system, like you agree to the pharmaceuticals, like we agree, as doctors, we'll agree that Watson's telling us anything, well, except for the one doctor in Florida. He wasn't too happy with that. Thank you very much for being the one voice, see, folks. It took one voice to call it, and they have to pay attention to that. He said they'll consider somebody's input. Well, that's just a comment period. They don't consider anything. They're going to hide it. How are we going to hide this problem? And they'll do it because no one will pay attention more than that one doctor, and he'll be gone after a while. But so we have a global condition helping the women, children, and the indigenous. It's always going to be some problem about that, that they get to make everybody feel good that someone's taken care of while no one else wants to. But we find out that the uh, military-industrial complex is involved with housing uh, kids in places that don't actually have the rights to do what they're doing, but they've been given license to do it the way they've been doing. So it's cool, folks, how they keep kids, little and, and broken up kid families, as a matter of fact, in cages. And then we hear these problems in the cages. The migrant children sent to shelters with histories of abuse allegations. What did I tell you long before about foster families? I told you they'll show you the prime example of a good foster family. That's the one that hits the news. Maybe one, maybe two. That's all you'll ever hear. And the rest are just nasty. That's what I found. And what's going on behind the, in there? Well, I don't even think you can find out because it's it's a secret problem. It is the trafficking system. It's where you hear about the runaways that go on. They're not runaway. But migrant child, uh, children sent to shelters with histories of abuse and allegations. Why do you think they separated the families? This is a system inside the system for child abuse, child trafficking. Otherwise, it wouldn't happen, folks. Taxpayers have paid more than $1.5 billion, bravo, billion in the past four years to private companies operating immigrant youth shelters accused of serious lapses in care, including neglect and sexual and physical abuse, a reveal investigation has found. I won't read any more. This is predictable. It's just now reaching the surface all these years later after I saw it in a court, in a civil court happening right in front of everybody's face through a judge that wouldn't allow evidence that he ought to have allowed. And then that evidence disappeared after it was submitted for approval and denied. Disappeared. It was damning evidence on the system for running tra uh, child trafficking. Why would a judge do that? What do you think? Protecting that system for sure. And that's when you start to understand what that system is sitting there to do. Migrant children sent to shelter. Why do you think the families are separated was a, is the, is the, is the plan, folks? Because they get to start, I told you the best way if you're a mother or, or father and are attacked by child services, if you can't escape right after the very first in, in, uh, interaction and you leave, if you don't and they take your kids, your little goats, you better go in and make sure you see them every, uh, twice, three, four, as many times a week as you can. You want to make sure that system knows you want to see your little ones. You don't want to let them put them away for a week or two or three and let them get lost over time under suggestions that you have no rights. This is the setup. Migrant children set to shelters with histories of abuse. You think, folks? It's in the system. This isn't an immigration problem. As I spoke about the statement called shelters with histories of abuse. This is not an immigration problem. This is a setup. Shelters and histories of abuse and tearing U.S. families apart has been going on for decades. Where, Where's the outrage before, folks? Is my question on a Twitter. Weeks and weeks and weeks ago. I was seeing so many people talking about this immigration problem. Oh, appalled by the, so by, the, by the abuse allegations. But not about the, C the child services harm that's was the plan. Rights of child was used to do this to, to children. I haven't heard many that were horrified up until the politicization of the immigration issue. Why? 
I just look at a society that's completely gone. I mean, just dysfunctional. I don't even know what to say. I don't have a description for it. That more than it's just not not functioning properly. It functions where it feels like it wants to function. And that's a proof. Because they've got your mind focused on something and it's not focused on the totality. And everybody just complains and does nothing about it. We hear exactly what's coming out, but we won't work anything more. And then we focus on the wrong point. I'm suggesting to you, with, with some measure of proof I can't prove back to you because it got stolen. There's abuse going on, and all the stories that we've been hearing about the immigration is the system of the United States for child care. And I s- submit it's the system that we're seeing everywhere in the, in the global structure. Immigrant children forcibly injected with drug drugs lawsuit claims. They blame it on President Trump here. He's trying to do one thing, but he, I don't know if he is appreciative of what the system is he's trying to do it with. President Trump's zero-tolerance policy stands to create a zombie army of children forcibly injected with medications that make them dizzy, listless, obese, and even incapacitated, according to legal filings that show immigrant children in U.S. custody subdued with powerful psychotic drugs, psychiatric drugs. You think it's not happening in the United States child care system, folks? Where's that outrage been? I'll stop reading these... This is what the proof's coming out, folks, and you can't let really let this go for those of you that can take this on. This is not just an immigration problem. Everybody got all this, uh, whatever it was, I don't know what it is. Oh, we're going to protect the immigrants, and, I, and they should be protected. Nobody deserves this. No, the families don't deserve to be broken up. They deserve an orderly due process. They deserve everything that they deserve if they're trying to come here. We've offered that. They are accepting it. That needs to be processed quicker. Not like the, 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 the lie I'm noticing now, the deportation that was denied at 911, that the, the lack of enforcement that was happening and that they use now to say not, it gave the reason for 911, the bombing, the, the, the terror attack. BS. It was a lack, it's a, it's a dereliction of the government to it, allow that to happen so they can continue doing all this stuff. So everyone gets about protecting the refugees. Fine. Uh, protect them. They need, people shouldn't be abused at all. There should be a due process. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that either. But don't, you don't have to abuse, there's no reason to abuse people. But why was everybody on the immigrant children? They stand by the of refugee. But don't stop the oppressor. As I say in another Twitter, brilliant. So you, you complain, but you don't take the next step to stop it. People seem always focused on the effect instead of the cause. World Refugee Day happened, and this is what this is all coming up about, appears to be an oppressor's promotion for the plan creating refugees. Human resources. Your S's in dollar sign. Refer to A2030, but read between the lines. Folks, I've talked about all this before. We're watching it as a political um, football in the United States. And people focus on the abuse and don't look at the fact that that abuse has already been happening in their lands already, and they didn't say anything about it. And all the techniques and things they've been using in the system are now turned to also treat and care, service, the, little, the families that are coming in and getting them used to this whole condition. Where were everybody about that before this, before World Refugee Day? Where is it? I don't see it. Where's been the concern and the outrage? American children, these children, these state wards, have been experiencing this for, for decades. The outrage against psychiatric judge instead of blaming guns? Kids ripped away from families, abused, or runaways, or pedophilia. This is what government does, folks. Look around really close. Where's been this outrage? I keep asking this question. I want to know. Maybe it's because I'm, it's uh, private to me. Uh, You know, I got my life looking at a documentary where I started to identify the systemic abuse. And I was wondering, wait a minute, we got to out that. And then I got, somebody got caught on to me because I wasn't aware that I was even underneath the scrutiny. And they dealt with me. 
I'm lucky to be alive, I think, all these years. I keep looking on all the people that tried to out this. Are all, a lot of them are all dead. But when I see a lot of people, and these are good people in the, in the country. They're just narrow-focused. They'll blame things, blame people for harm, and they'll be also outraged about the this little thing that's been going on in their face all over the place that they ignored. I have to wonder about us. Don't what wouldn't you think of it when you see of it that way, wouldn't you think about us as being a problem? What do we do that for? I think that's a it's a defect in us. I think there's a mental defect in us. It's like we're looking for something to make us important to get rid of the problem that we didn't want to take responsibility. Another story comes out after this World Refugee Day. Same thing, I got this one scientist in my feed, like I said, I don't know how I got her, follow her, there she is, so I'm following her, I don't, you know, I don't throw anybody out, I don't have that many I follow, and I don't get to follow, because Twitter's got me blocked, but through this feed comes another story, from a great, uh, from a big, uh, uh, I think it was from a, a big uh, p publication, telling us a story within the military of abuse, and I read that story, it's all heart-wrenching stuff. I don't really, really like reading it, but I I want to make a proof to something. I want to continue to witness something, notwithstanding how hard it is to look at. But I looked at that story it was written, and they talked about military officers and people and st statuses within the system and the rules and who who people how people were treated, the mothers, the fathers, the, the family was abused by a military army guy, uh, the wife was thought to be lying all the time. And I read that story, and you know that it brought back uh, the insight that I was starting to find in my documentary, and I was able to find the characters in the story. As I write down, the judges in that story were this guy named James Jacobson, who was a military officer. The prosecutors were John Trakert, the the the, uh, the army got, uh, the army abuse uh, alleged abuser superior. The Children's Services was this gentleman named Eric Holt in the story. And the mothers and her fathers were are the lying mothers. But I found this correlation in the civil system in 2001 that I was doing my documentary on. In other words, the one who was who couldn't read the story anymore because it was so heart-wrenching to read the story, who then comments about the military, must be in the military too, who also was on, commenting on Rural Refugee Day, will not look and say, well, maybe it's in the system. It must be in the military too. It must be in the refugees. But they don't didn't care before about the fact that it's systemic in all of the, in most, Everything I've seen about child services is this thing. is how I was able to tell you and predict once the juvenile judges in, in Philadelphia were identified, I said, watch out, there's a bigger thing going on. And what happened right after that? But Sandusky popped up, and I then the uh, affiliates of Sandusky and those guys in the university, I was able to tell you, watch out, it's actually over there in UK. It's got its origins there. And then Saville popped up. Did I know that before? No, but I know the th the, the earmarks of this stuff. And you're listening for certain things that drive you back. And you can find this the, the origins of this really simply by paying attention. And that gave me the insight to know that that means maybe lots of people are not paying attention or they don't want to actually see. That's not an educated public that can cause the change they need to get themselves back to the things that they should have. And we're back to the my problem. People are complaining about the immigrant kids' treatment and wondering why and how, and not a, not extending that off, that this is just the way the government has worked. There's people inside government that have exploited their positions, and it's why they're there. It's why I tell you, uh, don't you think it's kind of odd you never find a very, very limited exposure to people in government being prosecuted? Maybe there's a reason. They got another story about this. New network of pedophilia cops raped children for years because the department, quote, mistakenly covered it up.
Folks, this is, you're not going to know about this. It's covered up. At one hand, I understand the majority of society wants to believe the government and people in it are doing good. On the other hand, they're, they're actually blind to the amount of, of evidence. They want to stay blind despite the mounting and amount of evidence to the contrary. They can't stomach it. That's obvious. I couldn't. I don't want to read this stuff. But at some point, you don't, you can't just say, I don't want to read it and let it, because you're letting it happen. At some level, you're also not going to hear about it. I'm telling you it's out there. Whether or not you know or can prove it, listen for it. You'll hear it out there. Here's the reason. The system protects itself. Here's the first evidence. Inside information into the years-long sex saga involving two former Louisville Metro Metropolitan Police Department officers is now being revealed. Now. The city commissioned... Uh, former U.S. Attorney Key, Kerry Harvey uh, to investigate the LMPD Explorers Program for children to determine if sexual misconduct, abuse, and even rape were widespread with police officers involved in the program. Two flo why widespread? It happens at all. See, they're, gonna, they're trying to condition that as well. The two former LMPD officers are looking for the extent that they can cut the evidence off is what they're doing there. Uh, LMPD officers have been charged with serious crimes uh, uh, and uh, city and the good uh, re and for good reason was that they were using the explorers program to groom and position victims essentially uh, for whatever they wanted to do and it goes on and on and on we can talk about other organizations that do this it's in the system and it takes years to root it out And I hear the words of limitation here. They're not going to let it extend out. And yet, what allows me to see in general, quick application in fields of, of action where we see the stories regarding this. And in particular, I want to focus in on the, on the Philadelphia judges, the two juvenile judges. What they said, what they did, were the evidence of a condition there. You can find that everywhere, literally everywhere. And so why people are focused on the immigration, in a way, it's great. We're focused on immigration abuse, the abuse of kids. But what about their fathers and their mothers, too? Why the fam? oh, we got to break up, we got to keep the families together. Well, to me, that was just a bunch of attorneys saying we're going to keep up the abuse. Because we hear that they're being abused. And guess what? That abuse is normal, standard operating procedure. And we don't hear the outrage to that. It's always baffled me. We want to have, believe that there's a bigger thing, a better thing going on, and yet we'll close our eyes to the to the fact of it's not going that way, and we won't rise up to the responsibility where we can to stop to stop it. I tried to do what I could do. I got beat down pretty good. Didn't feel like I wanted to go down that track. wasn't going to work for me that way. I had to abandon that project. I'm glad to hear it coming out, but it's not just here and there activity. This is systemic. This is what government does. You see it throughout the stories I bring you, the news, the notice to us. They allow this mediocrity to work. They allow your life to be decided by the flip of a coin, technology that that is not much better than the flip of a coin. That's where they give you the choice, or they have a choice to make. Everything else is locked down. It's all controlled. Public-private partnerships, folks. You hear that? Every those stories are all about public-private partnerships. So what happens when the when people start to take over? What happens when people start to take take action? You think it, it goes into utopia? We now have it all together. Uh, we've heard a few stories where we d destroyed the government, uh, the governments in certain locales, and everything was peaceful for about six months, and the lawyers moved back in. So we've heard those stories. What about where and that's not necessarily the case, but people just stand up against what they think is an oppression? In this case, I'm going to be going to Mexico with the indigenous, I find out, in a town that threw out the local government, and the story was that things are going great. Now, I want, I, I touched this story, I was going to touch this earlier, I'm going to touch it now. I, as I read through this story, 
to see what how they did it, what they're doing, what the extent of it is. I, I realized this was trying to be a promotion for, if you will, the anarchist position, that you throw out all the government and you live amongst yourself peacefully, the non-aggression principle. And this is a good example of that, given this is a indigent, indig, indigenous people in Mexico that did this uh, by their rule, by their decision, and to protect the land, which I have no problem with all that. But it was it's somewhat promoted like this was the answer. And I, and I want to bring this up a bit to show that we may have our ideas and our utopian uh, concepts, but there's a reality in the world. However nice you get together and however you throw the government, no government, just agree, you know, whatever you do amongst yourselves, essentially a no government group of people that agree is a government. It's just a society. It's, how, it's just a choice that you make. But there's a, the, the town of Chiron was uh, once plagued by people claiming the right to rule over them, and now they live peaceful lives free of violence after the town of 20,000 people in Mexico decided to take matters into their own hands by kicking out politicians, cops, criminals, and now completely volunteer society is running the great, uh, running, running great, and the people finally have freedom and peace. Well, I did some more insert, research of that. That's pretty astounding. Let's go there, right? Let's go there, folks. I mean, what, what are we waiting for? People in Mexico figured it out. Well, you start reading behind this story, and it's not such the good thing that it was promoted. As we read the, one of the first stories I found out, community shaken by woman's murder. 32-year-old was an activist in the indigenous municipality of Jaron Mikaquan. Mikoakwan. The murder of a woman from an indigenous municipality in Jaron uh, was shaken, uh, has shaken the tightly knit community and reopened old wounds from more violent times in the past. Almost seven years ago, angry residents in the municipality of the state of Peru, Pica uh, region, rose up against the uh, local government and replaced it with citizen controlled Consejo Mayor or Great Council. So this is an indigenous uh, group of people putting their type of council in. That's still government. It's not in lack of government. It's just uh, by their terms. The locals had enough of the armed criminals who carried out crimes, kidnappings, extortion in the area, and they illegally logged the, the, the region's fine forest. Well, let's go back to the title. The title says that a, the community is shaken because of the murder. Happens to be an activist who was pressing. When you find out the real story, this is about the indigenous people in that area not wanting to have their, their minerals exploited and the forest destroyed. This harkens on over no different than what we hear in the United States of people wanting to protect the environment through what I would tell you is not rightfully done but when the use of attorneys and the stakeholders as stocking horses. But this is the people that actually had this and had the potent, had the ability to protect this land. But it does, it's not perpetual because the outside world is not peaceful. And I, and I just want to bring some reality to some of this. I'm all for the peacefulness and getting along. But if you disregard reality of the way of the state of the world, well, I don't know what to say about it. There's not the, the future lasts seven years. It's like the same seven-year cycle, the seven-year itch. This uh, community is now being racked by an outside force coming in and killing people. However, they want to be peaceful. And they're having now to, to be not so peaceful. They're having to protect themselves. And they have to rely on outside for outside state anyway now because of this. And I just wanted to bring this idea, I keep hearing this idea that there's this utopia out there. Not on this planet. And I don't want us to keep talking that way amongst ourselves. We can strive, I can strive for being peaceful all the time. The reality is we have we have problems with ourselves. And to disregard those are the ways that we go through the processes that we better handle that is to disregard reality and that's why i said we kind of lost that capacity and i think going through these agencies with non-jeopardy when you want something in the world that's being stopped by the government which is the major oppressor you can gain a measure of non-jeopardy but the thing you need by properly approaching it will give us the tools that we haven't had that we can start working this amongst ourselves in other areas of those that would come against us but we all have the common idea on how to do it. Not a bunch of hit and miss. Oh, let's make, like I was talking earlier, someone make, I'm going to make my patent so I have some protection. No, no, just go get the one that exists there. Why not you do that? And then use this one law. What's so bad about that? 
No, no, we got to invent all these things because there's this big war against everybody all the time. Even people in Mexico, indigenous people who figured it out, got to the point they had no government. They didn't. They had a government. It was just a different style of one. They were at peace with that. That's great for themselves. But there's an outside evil, if you will. Or there's an outside force that's not so evil but has its own rights that they were disregarding. And it isn't a closed self-reliant system when you read that story. Now, I do, again, so I just want to point out, we can have our ideas on how peaceful the world should be and how we want to do it amongst ourselves, but there's a reality. That's my only contention with a lot of people's ideas. We, put, we look at it in this word called anarchy. They come by, all these ideas come by many terms. In my, in the way I start to see it, it, there's a lot of ignorance about, uh, or the failure to apply the actual reality of the world that will be there. As a stakeholder, as I tell you, the Genghis Khan, and that's what they were dealing with in this story. I'm not saying it's right or wrong what they're, what the, what happened to them. I mean, what the people write, they, they don't have the right to murder people. What I'm saying is that that's a real reality dynamic. That, that these ideas I find uh, do not address. And they actually look away. It's like a responsibility you don't want to have to address. And you make so many excuses about how that's not going to be met. And so in paradise, we now have people being murdered. Because the outside world is so much so much less peaceful, peaceful than we would like for ourselves. Does that mean I say stop? No. You probably have to put break a couple of those uh, let it be attitudes. And you're going to have to defend yourself. And that's not aggression. But it's not peaceful either. You're not free from defending from your own lifestyle. So this is another lesson. We're not going to be free inside a system that purports to be free, even though they have the responsibility to leave you alone, because there's some people that get in there, in that system, that don't want to give that to you. Another story here about the indigenous and North Native Americans who protested Dakota Access. That's an oil condition, the pipeline. Uh, they get handed longest prison sentences. I thought this was disingenuous by this article. Uh, they want to promote, again, the, sta the stocking horse stakeholder condition. They promote that. When you read the article, those people, the, the Native Americans at DAPL, who got the longest sentences, were not charged with protesting. They were felons in possession of gun laws and all this, gun, uh, yeah, the gun charges and all this, things outside of protesting. And yet it's embraced by these... Uh, uh, these people that that was why uh, that, that somehow ra that's a racist rule a racist sentence we got to stop this too see this is our ourselves uh talking wrong against ourselves trying to Im expose and sensationalize things that aren't happening we got some apparently and i'm just not going to give too much to the system but the charges were not protesting and therefore, that you cannot compare the charges and sentences of those that were only protesting with those that agreed or were found to be doing felonies. To to to, to agree to that is kind of mis, mis it's a miswiring in your own mind. And so I got to be careful here. But when I'm looking at this information, what are they? What are we really looking at? And what's the promotion? We're not doing ourselves any good to promote a position that's not reality. Thank you for being uh, listening today. Grimmer, thank you very much for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Uh, thank you for what you do all there behind the scenes. Uh, thank you at all. Uh, Spreaker, Minds, uh, BitChute, all you folks. Uh, thanks for the donations at Freedom, uh, Freedom's Network, whoever that was, and just keep going to keep ahead. There's tools there. Uh, just something, I hope, uh, something was something that you heard today that you could start making your mind think about putting putting some energy toward and starting to take on a little bit more responsibility to take the millstones off your neck as indirect as it might become at the first time is all the information you have to learn. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Can of whoop ass feels like. Son, I 
just open a whole case of whoop ass. 